What's up guys? This is Engineer Jack. So this time, pag-usapan natin the second part on our loads on structures. So pag-usapan naman natin dito ang live loads, the classification of buildings for environmental loads, wind loads, earthquake loads, hydrostatic and soil pressures, and load combinations. So unahin muna natin guys yung live loads. So live loads are loads of varying magnitudes and or positions caused by the use of the structure. And the magnitude of the design live loads are usually specified in our building codes or the NSCP, the position of live loads may change. So each member of the structure must be designed for the position of the load that causes the maximum stress in that member. And the different members of a structure may reach their maximum stress levels at different positions of the given load. So for example, a truck moves across a truss bridge, the stress in the truss members vary as the position of the truck changes. So in our NCP, naka-specify dito yung live loads natin which is specified as uniformly distributed surface loads uh, pwede naka pounds per square foot or naka kilo pascal or naka kilo newton per square meter. The minimum uniform and concentrated live loads for some common types of buildings are given in the table 250-1 in NCP 2015. So for example, ito yung nakalagay sa NCP natin sa NCP 2015 na table 205-1 the minimum uniform load and concentrated live loads. So, meron tayong category. Depende sa occupancy. We have the description and the uniform load na nakakilopascal and meron ding nakakoncentrated load na nakakilinuton. Pero usually, ang ginagamit natin dito sa table, yung uniform load na nakakilopascal. So, mag kung mag-design tayo, guys, dapat ibibase natin kung anong category. No? So, titingnan natin kung anong category siya and titingnan natin kung ano bang i-design natin na load depende sa category. So, for example, kunin ko guys itong uh, 15 na category which is mag-design tayo ng bahay or residential. So, for residential, meron tayong uh, basic floor area, exterior balconies, decks, storage. So, usually, design natin sa residential yung basic floor area na merong load na 1.9 kilopascal. Nang 1.9 kilopascal natin, equivalent yan sa 1.9 kilonewton per square meter o 1,900 newton per square meters. Na pag kinonvert natin sa kilograms, meron ding 100 93.68 kilograms per square meter. Or, kung meron tayong 60 kilogram na tao per square meter, kaya niya more than 3 persons. Ibig sabihin, itong 1.9 kilopascal, ididesign natin yung basic floor area ng ating residential, hindi dapat bababa sa 1.9 kilopascal. Pwedeng mag greater than, hindi pwedeng magbaba, hindi pwedeng mag less than. Next, pag-usapan naman natin yung classification of buildings for environmental loads and una is the wind loads. So, wind loads are produced by the flow of wind around the structure. For example, meron tayong residential building and subjected to wind loads. As you can see, meron tayong positive pressure and negative pressure or suction. The magnitude of wind loads that may act on a structure depends on the following. So, una, the geographical location of the structure, the obstruction in its surrounding terrain, buildings, and the geometry in the vibrational characteristics of the structure. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin the estimation of wind loads. So, paano ba in-estimate natin yung load in our structure? The estimation of loads usually vary in detail. Most of them are based on the same basic relationship between the wind speed V and the dynamic pressure Q induced on a flat surface normal to the wind flow, which can be obtained by applying Bernoulli's principle and it's expressed as Q equals to 1 half rho times V squared. And Q, this the wind dynamic pressure na naka pounds per square foot or kilonewton per square meter for metric units. And rho, this is the mass density of the air na naka pounds per cubic foot or kilonewton per cubic meter. And the V is the wind speed which is naka miles per hour or naka meter per second for metric unit. So, meron tayong derived formula para sa English units, no? As you can see, this is QZ, equal yan sa 0.00256 KZ, KZT, KD, V squared. Where QZ is the velocity pressure at height Z na naka pounds per square foot. V is the basic wind speed na naka miles per hour. KZ is the velocity pressure exposure coefficient. KZT is the topographic factor. And KD is the wind directionality factor. So, usually, ito yung nakikita natin, guys, sa mga building codes natin or sa code natin 
natin, especially sa NCP. But in metric unit naman or naka SI unit, meron tayong QZ equals to 0.613, KZ, KZT, KD, V squared, and QZ is the velocity pressure at the height H na naka Newton per square meter, and V is the basic wind speed na naka meter per second. The external wind pressures to be used for designing the main framing of structures are given back. So ito na guys yung pinaka-final natin na formula, which is PZ equals to QZ, G times CP. This formula is used for windward wall. Ito yung part na positive pressure. And we are in dying time leeward wall, side walls, and roof, which is PH equals to QH, G, CP. So H is the mean roof height above the ground. QH, the velocity pressure at height H. PZ is the design wind pressure at height H above the ground. PH is the design wind pressure naman at mean roof height H. G is the gust effect factor. And CP is the external effect pressure coefficient. So as you can see, maraming uh, coefficients, maraming variables dito sa estimation of wind loads natin. Pero uh, for this subject, don't worry, hindi natin masyado pagkufokusan yan. Usually, given na lang yung load natin. Pag-usapan lang natin dito yung in solving the stresses resultants in our structures and members. So for example, ito yung sinasabi ko guys na part na the windward and the leeward. So sa part ng windward, uh, nakalagay yan sa part ng passive pressure. And yung side walls natin and dito sa part na wall, ito yung part na leeward. Ito yung floor plan natin and ito yung elevation plan. Kasi kung si ito yung nga yung windward and ito yung part na leeward. So, sa so next topic para sa loads on structures is the earthquake loads. An earthquake is a sudden undulation of a portion of the earth's surface. So, during an earthquake, the ground surface moves in both horizontal and vertical directions. And the vertical component of ground motion or the magnitude usually small and does not have a significant effect on structures. And horizontal component of ground motion causes a structural damage and must be considered in designs of structures located in earthquake-prone areas. Kaya nga, yung tawag natin sa earthquake load is a lateral load kasi it is a horizontal load. So, during an earthquake, as the foundation of the structure moves with the ground, the above ground portion of the structure, because the inertia of its mass resists the motion, causing the structure to vibrate in the horizontal direction. So, as you can see, the drawing, yung nagre-resist ng ground motion is the own weight of the structure, na yung movement niya is horizontal, no? So, sa earthquake loads, these vibrations produce horizontal shear forces in the structure. According to the codes, the total lateral seismic force that a building is designed to resist is given by the equation. So, V equals to CSW, where V is the total force or the base shear. And magkaiba to guys sa wind loads kanina. No? Kasi kanina, di ba, yung V natin is wind speed. Pero for the earthquake loads, yung V natin is the total lateral force. And W is the effective seismic weight of the building, which is DL or the dead load plus live load. And CS is the seismic response coefficient. So next, pag-usapan naman natin yung hydrostatic and soil pressures. So sa hydrostatic and soil pressures, structures used to retain water such as dams and tanks as well as coastal areas partially or fully submerged in water must be designed to resist hydrostatic pressure. And the hydrostatic pressure acts normal to the submerged surface of the structure with its magnitude varying linearly with the height. And maritime formula na pressure equals to gamma H where the gamma is the unit weight of the liquid na nakikilinewton per cubic meter. So as you can see, uh, for example, yung structure natin is gravity dams na subjected to water or fully submerged water. So yung behavior ng water natin sa gravity dams, uh, meron siyang pressure diagram na ganit ganyan. Nang pressure diagram niya is triangular loading. As you can see, yung pressure nga natin is gamma H and the pressure is directly proportional sa H. So kung si yung H, zero din yung pressure. At height H naman, meron din tayong value ng pressure. Kaya yung ano natin, loading natin is varying linear. Triangular loading. And meron din tayong equivalent hydrostatic force ng variable natin is F. And equivalent yan sa volume of the pressure diagram. So, pag-usapan natin guys naman yan sa fluid mechanics. Next, for soil pressures naman, uh, we have underground structures. We have basement walls and floors and retaining walls. And it must be designed to resist soil 
internal pressure. So, same pa din yung behavior natin pareho sa water, same pa din. Kasi yung this time, yung unit weight na gagamitin natin, syempre, for the unit weight of the soil. Naka kilonewton per cubic meter din. And this time, para sa soil pressure, yung variable natin para sa equivalent hydrostatic force is H. Kasi kanina, di ba, para sa liquid, uh, ginagamit natin na variable is F. Pero yung behavior pa din ng pressure natin is same pa din and varying linearly. And yung pressure diagram, uh, triangular loading pa din. And last but not the least, pag-usapan naman natin yung load combinations. So, dito sa load combinations, an engineer must consider all loads that might act simultaneously on the structure at a given time. Kasi di ba yung loads natin, pwede magsabay-sabay. So, in our NSAP at section 203, nandun guys nakalagay yung combination of loads natin. So, sa load combinations or sa section 203, this our load combinations. As you can see, meron tayong 7 combination of loads and ginagamit natin ito, depende kung ano mga loads ang pwede magsabay-sabay depending kung anong i-design natin na part ng structure. So, for example, yung floors natin, subjected lang sa dead load and live loads, so yung gagamitin natin is itong 203-2. So, itong gagamitin natin na subjected lang yung floor loads natin sa dead load nga and live load. So, meron tayong mga variables. As you can see, meron tayong mga letters dyan, yung D and F. Itong mga letters na yan, uh, ano ba ang tawag sa kanya? As you can see, itong 1.4 ang mga constants natin, 1.4, 1.3, ang tawag sa kanya is load factors. Na yung loads natin, minamagnify natin. Ibig sabihin, pinapalaki natin yung value. For example, yung kanina na live load na 1.9 kPa, minamagnify natin, nagmumultiply tayo ng constant na greater than 1, na ang tawag sa greater than 1 na yun, or sa constant na yun, is load factor. Ang purpose nga yun is to magnify the load. So, ito yung mga ibig sabihin ng mga letrang yun na nakalagay kanina. Yung D is the dead load, E is the earthquake load, uh, F is the load due to fluids, H is the load due to soil pressure, L is the live load, LR is the roof live load, May, meron tayong P, panding load, R is the rain load, T is due to the effect of temperature. So, nakalagay ito guys sa NCP, uh, pwede nyo buksan yung NCP kung meron kayo. Basta hanapin nyo guys yung section 203, doon nakalagay yung combination of loads. Pero guys, uh, for this subject, introduction lang yung itong part na to. Usually, ginagamit tong load combination sa design. So, pagdating natin guys next time sa reinforced concrete or, or sa steel design, itong load combinations or sa combination of loads, dun tayo mag-focus mag niyan kung paano ba mag-solve niyan, mga ganun. Pero this time, for introduction lang, yung topic na to. Meron din tayong guys sa ano, ginagamit for load combinations in our allowable stress or sa allowable strength design. Kasi kanina guys, as you can see, uh, itong topic na to, yung may 1.4, 1.2, uh, ginagamit natin to sa strength design. And meron din tayong another combination na din design natin pwedeng allowable stunt design din or sa allowable stress. So magkaiba guys yun. Know? So as you can see, meron dalawa sa pag-design. Uh, meron strength design and allowable stress. Para siyang strength materials lang na walang load factors. As you can see, walang kanina 1.2 walang 1.4, walang 1.6 So ina-add lang natin yung mga loads natin na walang magdefying factors or load factors. And pag walang ganun, ang tawag sa kanya is uh, allowable strength design. Pareho nga kanina, sabi ko, pag mas pag-uusapan natin yan sa design o sa structural design. That's it. Thank you.